All right, man, do you see this? The roof of this truck used to be well over my head. It could barely even fit in the shop. So in this video, this is where this build gets interesting if it hasn't been interesting enough already. What I mainly wanna focus on is the actual physical installation of the bags themselves. I'm talking about the front and rear, the fabrication, the cutting out the old, replacing it with the new. And by the end of this video, well, even right now, obviously, you can see that the truck is laid out and this is exactly what I was hoping would happen, and this is exactly how we're gonna make it happen. And now, we're watching Stinky But Daddy's Father's Day, channel of YouTube, welcome to Bodie Vision. So what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So as you can see from that last clip, the front of this truck was laid out. How I got there was just by pulling out the stock suspension. So in that last clip, there was no modifications made whatsoever. So what I wanna focus on to start off this video is I wanna start by removing all of the old stuff. I wanna cut out the shock mounts because we're going to be actually relocating them at a different time. And then we are going to weld in the bottom plate so that way I can kind of start to explain to you and show you how I'm going to figure out this process, how I'm gonna figure out how big the cups are gonna be, and let's just, let's just get the old stuff out for now. We're gonna start in the front. is in there I can start to establish my height which we already saw at the beginning of this video when my lower control arm is bottomed out with the frame that's the height that I want it to be at so when I go ahead and I do that I can stick a tape measure down this hole that I just cut out from removing the old shocks and I can figure out that height that I know the thickness of my compressed bags and then the difference is going to be the actual cup itself once we get to the back I'll explain a little bit more in detail how exactly I determine that top cup height keep in mind that top cup is really like a spacer and it's going to be different on every application. bags are pretty much mocked up I want to move on to the back the first thing that I'm gonna do is tear all the stock stuff out of there and then I can start to try to establish my height in the back what I want to do once everything is out I'm going to lift up the rear end by the differential and this can be kind of tricky because I got to keep an eye on the drive shaft making sure the drive shaft doesn't hit the body and then I continue to raise the rear end because that could damage the drive shaft potentially so I just kind of want to start to get some rough measurements see what I'm happy with and then we'll go from there With the front end, the point that I always wanted to return to was the lower control arm bottoming out on the frame. The rear, I wanna establish that as well. And what I found to be perfect is when the actual axle hits the bump stop, that is the perfect height for me. So that is always going to be my point to return to to get all of my measurements here in a little bit. So now that my height is established, I need to go in there and prep the axle. I need to cut out the old spring perches and weld in my new base plate for the bags. I cannot take any measurements until I at least have a starting point and that starting point is going to be the base plate for the bag. Thank you. 
the axle has been prepped and the new base plate is on there, now I can start to get the measurement for my top cup. And I'm gonna actually draw that out to give us a better understanding of what that looks like. So with this, I wanna draw it out in a way that can be potentially easy for us to understand as I'm explaining it. So this is the base plate that I just welded in. And as we're doing all of this, we have to establish the truck as low as it'll ever be so that way we can get maximum amount of lift out of the bags themselves. So we want the bags to be zeroed out when the truck is zeroed out. So we have our base plate right here and then we have our top surface right there. So what I wanna do is I wanna measure this distance and this distance just so happened to be five inches. So we have five inches for this total distance. I know that my bags crush down to three inches when they're fully deflated, leaving us with a two inch difference, meaning we have to put a two inch cup in there or a two inch spacer. So taking just a couple of those simple measurements is going to ensure that if our bags allow us to rise nine inches, we are going to actually be able to go nine inches up from the floor as opposed to some of that height being wasted by filling up a gap that didn't necessarily need to be filled. Now another thing that's really important that I wanted to point out is you want to put everything together before you attack it so that way you can know that that perch is orientated correctly on the axle whether it needs to rock forward a little bit sit perfectly parallel to the earth or we rock back a little bit I don't care what it is because if I put it together and everything's straight I can go ahead and tack it in and that angle is going to be correct as it is already put together <laughs> So at this point we have that bottom plate tacked in and everything is looking good for that but that leaves a problem with the upper cup where I'd have to get under there and weld upside down. I want to actually be able to weld it up top. So what I did is I just made a sharpie line around the exact radius that that cup was, drilled out a bunch of holes just inside of that sharpie line because the actual sharpie line is going to be wider than the cup itself. And then as I put the cup in there I just do a whole bunch of rosette welds all the way around and those rosette welds are going to hold it perfectly in there. Keep in mind there should be no downward tension on this. It's really just locating it and keeping it locked in. So that's the way that I do it. Also I needed to go ahead and make an access hole so that way I can pull the two bolts out of the top of the bags and I couldn't get a wrench in there before. The best way to do this by far would be to just get a hole saw but I was feeling cheap and I didn't have a hole saw. So I just used an angle grinder with a smaller grinder blade and I just worked it around, cut out a nice circle and I'll show you how I did that through the clip and if you didn't know that you can cut a circular hole with an angle grinder this um this is a pretty cool example of it it worked out <laughs> Once that access hole is there and it's made, I wanna reassemble everything, put the top cup up there with the bag in between, and then tack it down. And now that that hole is there, once it's tacked, I can put my 14 socket in there, pull out those two bolts, get rid of the bag, and then weld it out completely once and for all. And I don't wanna do all of my welding with the bags there, but I do use the bag to keep me lined up initially as I'm tacking it. <music> All right, so with the truck and the entire system that is the bags, I got everything laid out right here and all kinds of fittings. It turns out I need to wait a little bit for some parts to come in the mail, but that is perfect because something else just arrived. And this is like, this is so perfect for me, right? Because I'm building this truck and this truck is gonna be really cool. So naturally I wanna do cool things. Naturally I wanna do cool things with the truck, right? And what's more cool, than to throw some e-bikes in the back of it. Take some bikes out on the weekend with your girl, have a real good time. So this one right here, this is like the beach cruiser style. I ended up getting two bikes from the same company. One is a beach cruiser vibe, and then the other one is more of a mountain bike vibe. And the beach cruiser, really cool, dude. This thing's got some fatties on it with the blue wheels. 
How sick would it be if I repainted the bike to match the truck? And then I threw the bike in the back of the truck and I was just Audi. Both of them are flat black. Let me just, what the hell is going on? Yeah, bro, bomber style. Beach cruiser little vibe right here with the shocks. I got the other one put together a little while ago. I wanna go ahead and get this one thrown together because I was waiting for this one to get here in the mail. Shipped out relatively quickly. One came a little sooner than the other one, but that's okay. So one thing about these bikes, they come with all the hardware, tools, and everything that you're gonna need to get going and on your way. I obviously have all the tools that I need in my shop, but I don't wanna go looking for this socket and that wrench and everything. So this right here, here's your instructions, comes with an Allen key and a wrench, some nice aluminum pedals. We got a reflector. This is so that way the ladies can hear, hear you before they see you. Charger right here. Ooh, got a little bomber style headlight too. Now this is your digital dash heads up display for all my race car guys out there. And they come with little adapters to configure on different handlebars and whatnot. Like I said, this is the second bike that I got from them. The other one I put it together a little while back. So as I'm figuring out my next step and what exactly I have to do, I'm just gonna throw a time lapse on for you of me assembling the last bike. All right, so this bike came packaged up really nicely. Nothing was damaged on either one of the bikes. So I just quickly get it ripped out. The first thing that I wanna do is get my handlebars on. That way I have something to hold on to as I'm assembling it. Once the handlebars are all good, I get the bike quickly flipped over, throw that front tire on, make sure it can rotate, no problem. Then I get the seat thrown on. Obviously we need somewhere to sit. And then the next thing and final thing is I gotta get that digital dash thrown on. All right, so we got the flat black Seagull right there. We got the flat black Shark. The thing is with these bikes, right? Like I knew I wanted to have a good time, but I don't nearly have as good of a time as I could if I'm just out riding by myself. Like the main thing was, is like, dude, I'm gonna have to get two of them. Like there's no way that I can just by myself. I wanna share this fun time and this experience with either my brother or my girl or anybody. If anybody comes over and we wanna go hit the e-bikes, there's some trails close by that are real nice. That's like the main goal. Like that's what I have them for, is to have a good time with other people. So I felt like two of them was definitely necessary. We got my pedals. Might as well throw that on right now. Like I said earlier, it comes with a wrench. And just like that, I got the display set up. So you gotta set up the display as well as the display controller. There's just three buttons on the display controller. It's real easy to get used to. Like I got this bike within a few seconds of reading the manual. I was on my way and ready to rock. So we just gotta put the seat on here. So the unfortunate part about these is you have to charge them before you can use them. So I gotta let this, oh, I got the headlight too. What's up with that? He's on now, son, it's over. How do you turn it off? That's it. Oh, dude, and I also got fender flare things, like little fenders, because you know that looks sick too, so let me grab those. All right, so I just finished putting the shark together. We got Josh on the shark. Josh, what you think about it? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's neat. You can actually go outside and uh, enjoy a bike ride and not have to you know, sweat like crazy to enjoy right. the outdoors. Ooh, dog. What's up, man? What's up? Yeah, it's pretty cool. So right now, Josh, what mode are you in? Uh, there's five different modes, one through five. Five being the most, like it's gonna help you out the absolute most. One being like, it's gonna barely assist you on that pedal assist and or throttle. Josh, what are you at? Yeah, I'm at two right now, but it's a little bit more tight right here. Right. Um, but actually back there when it was a little bit more open, I was up on four. Right, so I'm on mode two. We're, we're doing 15 miles an hour. So looking at my view right here, I'm just barely pedaling along. Like I'm not even working at all, just, get it going and the assist is at level two and we're just cruising at 12 miles an hour. Let me bump it up a little bit. So we just got right here. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up to five so that way we can see. So my legs just barely going and the bike picked up drastically. Now I'm doing about 20 miles an hour on this little trail. My feet can't even keep up with it anymore. How fast are you going? What you got? Woo, got the flyby on them. So we hit the end of the trail. Josh, there's um, there's a big lake over here where it opens up. You wanna go check that out? 
Yeah, we'll that's right fine. over there. So huge thank you and shout out to EcoTrek for sponsoring today's video. We had a really good time messing around with the bikes. I'm definitely gonna mess around with them a bunch more, whether it's my brother, my girl, or anybody in between. We're gonna head back to the shop because I have a lot more work to do with those bags. Josh, what do you think? You ready to head back? Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. So back at the shop now, and man, when we were out on those bikes, I was hoping some of my last parts would arrive that I needed, but unfortunately they're not going to be here today. But at this point, we have all of the physical mounting of the bags themselves. I like to think of a bag install as kind of three different parts. You gotta do the physical mounting of the bags, then you gotta run all of your air lines and plumb all of those systems, and then you have to run electric to control the valve. So that way your airbags can inflate and deflate with the flip of a switch from the inside of the cab. Now this entire system, this is all like a budget thing. I didn't want to go crazy and do air management and have a manifold. So this is all going to be a very simple system. Now I could have, but I feel like the vibe of this truck is let's see how cool we can make it. And let's not spend a lot of money because we're not trying to spend a lot of money and I think it's going to be cool enough as is. And I also got one of these little Johns for it too. Really cool stuff. So in the next video, we'll be running all of the air systems. We'll be running the electrical. I'll get into detail with some of that stuff. As far as the physical installation of the bags themselves, let me know if you had any questions. Oh, I'm out. Go inside and do your homework. <laughs> Come on. You got homework today because I'm making it. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. <laughs> all right, all right, all right.